Welcome. We're glad you could join us for our very first in a series of webinars on the Georgia Early Learning and Development Standards, also known as the GELs. I'm Commissioner Bobby Cagle from Bright from the Start, Georgia Department of Early Care and Learning, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to the new GELs. We are excited to be able to finally share this work with all of you. We began revising Georgia's Early Learning Standards in 2010. The standards we had were good, but we knew that we could make them better. We had three main goals. First, to raise the quality of early learning experiences for children birth to age five. Second, to provide a better alignment with the Common Core Georgia Performance Standards for K through 12. And third, to create a universal language that everyone could use regarding the learning and development of children. The gels provide a framework for what children should know and be able to do by a certain age. However, it is up to teachers, parents, grandparents, pediatricians, child care providers, early interventionists, and community members, amongst many others, to make decisions about how the standards should be addressed and met. These standards are the next step toward improving quality and consistency of all Georgia's early learning programs. Adoption and implementation of the GELs by all stakeholders will go a long way toward preparing Georgia's children for kindergarten and beyond. With that in mind, the number one goal at DECAL is to provide you with the support and resources you need to successfully implement the GELs. I hope that you find the information in this webinar to be helpful as we move forward with the rollout in the upcoming year. We have a responsibility to ensure success for all children in this state, and that road begins here today with all of you. Now I'm going to turn it over to Laura Evans, our standards coordinator, to provide some more in-depth information on the gels. Thank you, Commissioner. As standards coordinator from Bright from the Start, it is my task to give you all the information you need about the new Georgia Early Learning and Development Standards, or as we like to call them, the GELDs, and to make sure you have all the tools and resources you need for successful implementation. To start us off, I wanna go over some basic questions. First of all, what are early learning standards? We define early learning standards as a framework or guidelines that tell us what children from birth to age five should know and be able to do. We know through research and more so through experience that there's no one size fits all for Georgia's youngest learners. So these early learning standards provide us with a guide and serve as a framework to give focus to how we approach early learning and development. Another question, why do we need early learning standards? Well, first of all, they promote quality learning experiences for children from birth to age five. When teachers and parents have the tools they need, then they can best support children to be successful learners. But let's hear what some others have to say about that. I'm excited about the rollout of the new gels for Georgia because it is research-based and we need to make sure that we're implementing things within the classroom that are research-based and teachers need a guide to help them with their lesson plans and with their activities within the classroom and then that guide needs to be extended out you know to the families that we work with so it's exciting to have something that um, new standards that are updated and that are research-based that the teachers can use. The standards tell the teachers what the children need to know. So um, it's very important because we really want to make sure that children don't have gaps in their learning and that we're touching on all the important skills. Um, you know, we look at the standards and then we dig deeper. We look at what skill do children need to um, learn in order to meet that, that standard. And then the standards also make us look at the whole child. So it's not just the cognitive, there's language, there's health, there's science. It really covers social and emotional. So it really helps us to focus on the whole child. Early learning standards also support children's individual rates of development, approaches to learning, and cultural context. Children today come from all different backgrounds and they definitely don't all learn the same. So the new standards address and support all the different ways children learn. They also support the early identification and referral of children with special needs. And as we'll hear from one of our guests today, um, they let us know when extra support is needed and if early intervention is needed. 
They also help teachers as well as parents understand the developmental progress of their child. Children's learning must be a collaborative effort, and so we all have to work together. But let's hear what a parent has to say. We learn differently, and then as we are instructing our kids, we have different skill sets. And when you don't have a standard to start from, it's difficult sometimes to approach it from a daily aspect and determine how you're gonna reach a particular child. So having a set of standards as a guideline, it's very important. You know, for me, I think it's a collaborative process, and I like to have the open communication dialogue with her teachers, and so that I understand what the daily activities are, what the expectations are of me and my wife, so that as we work through what they're working through in the classroom, we can also do that outside the classroom as well. So if there's any particular topic that they're working through, we can do that over the next couple of weeks. It could be something really simple. Just driving down the road, there's always an opportunity to incorporate what the child has learned through the day. And so, where well, there's an open dialogue and communication about the efforts that are taking place in the classroom, we can do the same at home. And our final reason why we need early learning standards is they provide a universal language for all stakeholders to use regarding the learning and development of children. It's our first step toward helping children succeed. One of our consultants puts it this way. I think all stakeholders involved in a, in a child's education and a child's life need to be able to speak the same language. The GELDs are going to allow that to happen. Um, the set of standards set for each individual age group is something that pediatricians need to know, teachers need to know, parents need to know, community members need to know so that everyone can work together to help the child and the children of Georgia meet standards and be successful and progress on toward um, school age and being ready to learn. Another question we need to answer is how do teachers use early learning standards? First, they use the standards to plan instruction, to plan activities and lessons. Secondly, they use the standards to measure a child's progress. And third, they use the standards to guide curriculum and assessment decisions. I had a chance to sit down with a pre-K teacher and here's what she had to say about that connection. Standards drive my instruction um, as always and so when I'm writing plans and when we're meeting and collaborating as an instructional team we always start with the standards um, because they're our guideline for what needs to be covered throughout the year. We always start with a standard and sort of decide what we want to cover this week. We talk about student needs and how we can adapt our instruction to meet them at their level. It just gives us such a great baseline for, for where we need to go, we can look and, and really use the standards as a trajectory and put the kids where they need to be. Here's a diagram that better illustrates how this connection works. You start with your early learning standards and then you make decisions on curriculum and assessment based on the early learning standards. So lesson planning should always begin with early learning standards and standards should guide all the other decisions. Now let's go to a little background on our GELDS project. Georgia began revising the state's early learning standards in 2010. Our revision project stemmed from a need for higher quality standards for children birth through five and a need for better alignment with the Common Core Georgia Performance Standards, CCGPS, for K through 12. As the commissioner mentioned earlier, the standards we had were good, but we wanted to make them better. So what we did is we commissioned top researchers in early education to conduct an alignment study that examined content, rigor, and age appropriateness. And based on the researchers' recommendations, Georgia developed a new set of standards that will take the place of the Georgia Early Learning Standards for Birth to Three and the Pre-K Content Standards. Our new standards are the Georgia Early Learning and Development Standards, or GELDs. This diagram shows how we started off with two sets of standards, and now we have one cohesive, research-based set of early learning standards, the GELDs. 
The gelled structure has five domains or areas of learning. The first domain is the physical development and motor skills. And underneath this domain, you have several strands of learning. You have your health and well being, you have your use of senses, you have your motor skills, your fine and gross motor. Our second area or domain of learning is social and emotional development. And here you have developing a sense of self, self regulation, and developing a sense of self with others, which is your social skills with peers and social skills with adults. Our third area is approaches to learning. This is where we help children figure out how they learn. So here you have your initiative and exploration, your attentiveness and persistence, and their approaches to play, because we know that approaching play is how they'll approach learning later on. Our fourth learning domain is communication, language, and literacy. And under this domain, you have those listening skills, the expressive language skills, your early reading and early writing. The fifth domain is cognitive development. And under this domain, you have your more disciplinary um, areas, such as math, social studies, science, creative development, and cognitive processes, which is a new area for our early learning standards, which really address those higher order thinking skills, those reasoning skills, and problem solving. So a little bit more breakdown of the structure. You start off with that large learning domain, and then you have under that a strand, which is a grouping of similar standards. You have your actual standard statement, which is a statement of knowledge. Then you have indicators under each standard that are age appropriate, they're specific, they're measurable and observable statements. And then under that, you have examples of learning in action. What does this actually look like in a classroom? So you start with your overarching learning domain. And here I'm using the example of communication, language, and literacy, the early reading strand. Under that, you have your standard statement. And for this example, we're using the child will develop early phonological awareness, which is the awareness of units of sound. And then under that, you have five different age appropriate indicators that really show that developmental progression that each child should take. So an infant, a zero to 12 month old, should be able to listen to simple rhymes and chants. But by the time they get to 48 to 60 months, they should be able to identify and produce rhyming words. So it really shows you how they progress. And now, I'm going to toss it over to Dr. Laura Johns. She's in the studio today with some experts who are going to weigh in on our early learning standards. Dr. Laura? Thank you so much, Laura Evans. I'm really excited to be here. As the Director of Quality Initiatives at the Department of Early Care and Learning, I oversee programs that really support early care and education to meet higher quality standards above and beyond licensing compliance. I'm joined here today by my colleagues, um, Dr. Graham from the Morehouse School of Medicine and um, Eileen Kaiser from Babies Can't Wait. Eileen and Dr. Graham, I, I get why I am so excited about the Georgia Early Learning and Development Standards because they are integrally part of my work. They really help me work with teachers and programs to understand this idea of intentional teaching practices. But it's a little harder to understand why you guys are fired up about the gels. So I wanted to have you start talking with us about what fires up a pediatrician and an early interventionist about the Georgia Early Learning Standards. I think what's so wonderful about the GELDS program is it, that it provides a standardization tool for how we evaluate development in children. Parents often become frustrated when they hear a different message from their provider than what they hear from their educator at their child's school. So by using the GELDS program, the parents are hearing a unified message so that they can better follow their child's progress. Mm -hmm. I'm excited because in early intervention, the focus is on helping the family or the caregiver learn to identify learning opportunities that promote the child's development. And the GELS is an easy to read format that can help them see where the child is and what they need to be doing to move the child to the next level of development. So in both of your work, you're really focused in on supporting parents and supporting families. So I wonder what advice you would give to a family who's looking for a first experience in early care and education and enrolling their child in an early care and education program. 
think it's very important to understand what the developmental standards are for your state. Um, all child care facilities are not created equal, and it is possible to be licensed without meeting the maximal uh, developmental requirements. So by understanding what programs like GELDS are focused on, it can ensure that parents are providing their children with the best educational experience. It's also important for them to realize that cognitive skills are not the only part of early development, and that social skills and physical activity and gross motor skills are very important as well. So ensuring that they enroll their children in programs that will provide a balanced curriculum is very important. And would you give the same advice to a family who's enrolling a child with special needs? Absolutely, I agree with Dr. Graham. I think that the GELs will really help that with the section that talks about modifications that mm -hmm. can help teachers adapt activities so that everybody can participate and um, I really think that it's important for kids with special needs to be in an inclusive setting so they can be around typically developing peers as good role models. So I, I hear a lot about um, IEPs and IFSPs mm -hmm. as something that we use to guide practice in early care education programs. How do the GELs support an IEP and an IFSP? An IFSP is an individualized family service plan. We use that for birth to three and early intervention. And that's really based on the family's priorities. So the, the family can use the gels to see where their priorities are, what they need to do to support their child, look at those, um, those learning examples of activities. They can really use those to come up with ideas for things they can be doing in the course of the normal routine to meet those goals. The IEP is for kids three to five who are in preschool special ed, and that's an individualized education program. And teachers can, again, take that modification section, take those wonderful examples of activities, and use those to support the child's learning in a more educational-based environment. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like both of you are really advocates for parents and advocates for parents choosing high quality, developmentally and culturally appropriate early care education programs and that the GELs really can provide a foundation for that intentional practice. So I guess both of you also have had parents who are concerned about early care and education and they have questions um, about the early care and education program that their children are enrolled in. Um, is that something you would guide parents to come to their pediatrician and talk about? Absolutely. I think the pediatrician can provide excellent resources for parents with regards to early education. We have resources through the American Academy of Pediatrics that we can refer them to, some that only we can access, but many that they can access at home as well. So the pediatrician is a wonderful resource. Mm. And Eileen, I wonder if you could give us a, a couple of minutes about uh, a program um, staff member, a teacher or maybe a director who is watching a child in the program and they're looking at their gels and saying, hmm, this child really isn't progressing the way I think mm -hmm. they should be. What should be their next step in supporting that family and that child? The next step would be to have a discussion with the family and to encourage the family to make a referral to Children First, which is how people would make a referral to Babies Can't Wait if they have concerns about development, and get a free screening. Um, Babies Can't Wait is totally voluntary, so even if a family goes through screening and evaluation, they don't have to participate. But I think it's always important to let the family know that you're making a referral or encourage them to make the referral. And it may turn out to be that the child's fine and just needs some additional supports, but if the child does need early intervention, then the service provider can come into the classroom and work with the teacher to help that child move forward and be able to participate with the other children in the classroom. Mm -hmm. So, Dr. Graham, how important is it that parents kind of stay on top of developmental milestones and, and how important would it be for a parent to even understand what the Georgia Early Learning and Development Standards are? It's largely important. <laughs> so developmental milestones are a huge part of our well child visits for children, particularly between birth and five years old. The reason we target that age group is because that's usually before they start school. Um, we focus a lot on developmental milestones largely because we want to pick up the children that are delayed with their development 
development, but it's also important to have a resource to ref that we can refer parents to for children that are developing appropriately. And that's wonderful that the GELS program actually provides us that opportunity. I think another thing that's important for parents to recognize is that it's so important to follow up with the well child visits because mm -hmm. development is on a continuum. So just because your child is doing very, very well at two months doesn't mean sometimes they can't fall off with some of their skills. And the earlier we intervene, the better it will be. And I know that we can all use this framework for the Georgia Early Learning Standards as an opportunity for us to help parents say, hey, we have something going on. Do you have a medical home? Let me help you find a medical home. So that real interaction with the provider, the early care education professional, and their pediatrician, mm -hmm. and the Babies Can't Wait system will be really important. And, and using the GELDs as kind of our common language to talk about that, mm -hmm. I think would be really a, an amazing opportunity for all of us. Absolutely. So we have a couple minutes left, and I wonder if either one of you would like to um, say anything else about the Early Learning Development Standards as a foundation for your work and our combined work as we really represent a system of care for Georgia's children. I say yes. I think setting the stage early is very important for us as pediatricians. I think sometimes with our well child visits, we don't begin these discussions until the children are three or four years old, whereas we can start them when they're infants or when they're toddlers. Mm -hmm. So beginning the conversation about early education early, because some parents, uh, for, because of their family beliefs, do not feel that their children should go to school before they're in kindergarten. And they don't recognize that children that have, are exposed to early education tend to perform better once they start kindergarten. Mm -hmm. So by starting the these conversations early, sometimes we can change their minds and get the children in as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. And having the indicators show the progression from birth up to age five helps families understand the importance of some skills, how later on they're going to affect the child academically. For instance, um, being able to communicate is going to affect literacy down mm -hmm. the road. So I think having that all in one place makes more of an impact that really helps parents understand how everything's interconnected. Well, I just want to thank you both so much for being here with me today. It is so important that all of us remain on that same page, understanding that learning begins at birth, and understanding that if we use the early learning and development standards as a way, a guide to support our teaching of young children, we're all going to be much better off, and our children are going to all meet their potential. So I want to send it back to you, Laura. Thanks, Dr. Laura, and thanks to our guests. What wonderful information. As we begin to wrap up today, I want to do a short demonstration of our new GELDS website. You can access the website at gelds.decal.ga.gov. As we move forward with the rollout, this site will serve as a portal for all information and resources related to the GELDS. As you can see from the home page, you can find some background documents on our revision process and project, as well as a list of frequently asked questions. You can also leave comments on the GELDS. If you click on the GELDS tab at the top, it will take you to a searchable database of all the standards and age-appropriate indicators. They are organized by domain, so if you click on a domain, you'll be able to filter the information any way you want. You can look at all age groups, or you can click the boxes you want and only search a specific age group. When you actually click on an age-appropriate indicator, a box will pop up. Eventually, these pop-up boxes will contain a plethora of information related to each indicator. There will be examples of learning in action, examples of accommodations, um, there will be a rationale for each indicator, and a video clip that shows you exactly what that indicator would look like in the classroom. If you go up to the top to the resources tab, you'll also find some other information such as these webinars that provide background on the GELDs and some other resources that will be helpful as we begin our implementation. So that's all for today for our very first GELDS webinar. We are extremely excited about this initiative and are looking forward to the implementation of the GELDS over the next two years. Thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope this has been helpful. For more information, feel free to access our other webinars in this series on our website. Until next time, thank you.